We're going to look at a hypothesis test when we're dealing with means. And so in this example here, we're given a bunch of information. We're told that mu is 172, that's the average, uh, the population average that someone predicted. And our alternative hypothesis is that mu is less than 172. So we kept the same as the null, and we as the researcher pick the direction we believe it's going to be less than. Alpha is 0.05, our standard value, our standard cutoff for our p-value. Next up, it already shows our sample data. It says we went out and collected our sample. We found a sample mean of 168, which is in fact less than 172. So we're on the right track. We just have to figure out if it's less enough. Uh, our standard deviation of 11.3 and our sample size n of 41. Uh, last thing we're told what we need to do here, we need to find z, uh, which means find the z-score uh, that corresponds to where our p-value is going to end up. Sketch the normal curve and then calculate the p-value based on that. So we're going to start out trying to calculate the z-score that we need. And that's always going to be our sample minus our null hypothesis means. So we're going to say, how far away from the null am I? In this case, 4. Calculate that in a moment. Second piece of that is going to be, uh, what is, divide that by my new standard deviation, my sampling distributions standard deviation, which in this case comes from the central limit theorem. Uh, S divided by square root of n, or we will fill that in with numbers in a moment. It'll be 11.3 divided by root 41. So filling all of this in, 168 minus 172, all of that over 11.3 divided by square root of 41. And when we plug this into our calculator, it's not a bad idea to do this in two steps. Um, depends on your comfort level. You type that in on your denominator, you're going to get a sampling uh, standard error here of about 1.76. You take negative 4 divided by your last answer, and that's going to come out to negative 2.27 uh, if we round it off. And what that is, is that is the z-score that we would mark on our normal curve to decide whether or not we are far enough away from the null hypothesis. So if I were to sketch myself a normal curve below here, and I have my null hypothesis is always in the middle, I'll just maybe mark a mu in the middle, and then I go about one standard deviation out to that inflection point, keep going a little bit to the second one, third standard deviation is now way out there my negative 2.27 is going to fall somewhere around here. And what we're going to say is that it's that and lower. We're going to look at our less than we have for our alternative. So we're going to take that value and lower. And we want to say, what is the probability of being under that part of the normal curve? To get an exact number, we know it's going to be something small. We're going to use our normal CDF from our TIs. And we're going to start out, the left side is going to be negative infinity, so something very negative, such as 9, 10. Second number is going to be uh, the z-score here. That's where we stop shading in the region, so about 2.27. And when we type that into our calculator, we will get hold the suspense, 0 0.012 if we round it off, 0 0.012. That is our p-value. The p-value is always going to be the area under the curve. So the, the less than said I should be going from this value and looking left or down, uh, and so that's how I knew to shade that region. p-value of 0 0.012 if we were to keep going with this problem, since it is less than 0.05, we would reject our data is statistically significant. We accomplished what we set out to do, which is to prove that the mean of whatever the situation is, is less than 172.